Structural formula in chemistry is described as the minimal detail that shows the arrangement of atoms in a molecule. It can be quite tricky to get right sometimes, and in this video I'll especially focus on those times that we use brackets to make sure you understand when and when not to use them. Visually, we see each carbon listed out one at a time with what immediately comes after each carbon assumed to be bonded to that carbon, eventually leading us to the next carbon up in the chain, where the sequence then continues. This isn't quite always true for some more complicated functional groups like carboxylic acids and esters, but I will discuss examples of them right at the end of this tutorial. First up here, we have butane, and what I've done for the butane to get us started is I've numbered, like I have done for all the structures throughout this, I've numbered the longest continuous chain of carbons, just because then when I'm numbering it out in the structure on the right-hand side, you'll be able to track across where each carbon is located. So I'm just going to change my pen color there, and make sure that you can see this there, and here we go. So, first up with butane, we've got a straightforward four carbon chain and moving from left to right, we would write the structural formula as CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And that's as simple as we can really get with this. If I number out the carbons, we've got one, two, three, and four as identified by the red numbers in the molecule on the left. Notice how after each carbon, we list all three of the hydrogens bonded to it before moving on to the next carbon in the chain. We sometimes see for very long, very samey structures, not massively like the butane, but you can do it for this one as well, that the repeated CH2CH2 part, so that's this bit just here, can actually be chucked into some brackets. Now, this isn't the only time we use brackets, but you may recognize this from some exam questions that use uh, polymers, for example. Here, what I can do, therefore, is instead of writing out the CH2CH2 twice, I can use brackets here, and put it once in the brackets and then put a two on the outside like that and then just write ch3 at the end so what we've got here now is carbon one carbons two and three would be in this section and then carbon four on the outside and like i said it's not the only time we use brackets but this is a good example of where we can let's have a look at this alkene so for this alkene just here we've got e butuene with the way that i've drawn it out we've got the e stereoisomer when listed in structural formula, you'll notice that the structure almost looks incomplete. Let me demonstrate. So if I write it out, I've got CH3, CH, CH again, and then CH3. It's all a bit weird. If I number out the carbons, just so you can see it, so I've got one, two, three, and four. I think you miss out on a lot of activity and explanation with what's going on in the middle of this molecule. And furthermore, the stereoisomerism, the fact that I labeled this originally as the E stereoisomer, is now nowhere to be seen. There's no way from a structural formula that you would actually have any idea that this molecule would be the E stereoisomer of the butuene. So there's a limitation here associated to structural formula. Let's have a look at this example of 2-methylbutane. Now, with the 2-methylbutane, you'll notice that I've got the branch in blue, and I'll demonstrate the branch in blue inside the listed out formula when we get to it. And this is an example where we're going to tackle some brackets. So, let's list out the structural formula and then pick through what's going on. With the structural formula, my starting point is a bog standard CH3, and that's for carbon number 1. When I then get to carbon number two, I write CH, and then this blue CH3 is placed in brackets, like so. I then continue with the rest of the name, and then for clarity, here are my numbered out carbon atoms. My four from my chain, and you've got that CH3, that methyl group, hanging off the side. If we're looking for a rule, 
As a rule, we use brackets whenever a functional group on a chain contains more than one type of atom, and this then also applies to any branches. So there are other functional groups that I'll demonstrate in a moment that can do this as well, but because the CH3 group is more than one atom big, it's more than one type of atom, then I'm going to put it in brackets here to make it really clear that the whole thing is bonded to the carbon that came before it. I don't get muddied with it being somewhere in the chain. You may see structural formula written slightly differently from this, but I think this gives you the clearest impression of what the molecule is and prevents it from being ambiguous. What about our next example then? 3-chlorobutantuol. Right. So listing out this one, I've got the numbered sections already here for me, so they're already numbered out. So let's go from left to right. I've got CH3, so that's carbon number one. I'm just going to use black numbers for this one because I've done the CL in red. I've then got, for carbon number two, there it is, I've got my CH, and then the OH, because it's more than one atom, is going in the brackets. There we go. I then carry on and get to carbon number three. And when I do carbon number three, it doesn't matter which order I do them, but I'm just going to do H and CL. I'm not putting the CL in brackets. And the reason is because it's only one atom. So it's obvious that just like the hydrogen that was just listed before it, they are both bonded to carbon number three. And then to finish off my molecule, I've got CH3 like so. And so that's the 3 chlorobutantuol in structural formula. Let's just put the 4 on that final carbon so you can track the structure through nice and clearly. Now, as I mentioned before, esters and carboxylic acids are a little bit different and we need to make sure we can interpret what they're telling us when used in the exam. For esters like methylethanoate, the COOC in the structural formula, so this bit here, represents this entire yellow highlighted section in the molecule just there. So it looks like it's going to be carbon, then an oxygen, then an oxygen, then a carbon, so kook. But actually, we've got this double bond to an oxygen up here, and then we do go through an oxygen, through this section, but it's definitely not carbon, then oxygen, then oxygen, then the other carbon. We've got this double bond feature just here. Make sure that you can interpret structural formula for a range of functional groups like this one. Then we've got butanoic acid underneath, which is something quite similar. For butanoic acid, the carboxylic acid group is this COOH at the end. So if esters have kook, then carboxylic acids have koo, like a pigeon. And the butanoic acid, carboxylic acid functional group is all of this section here. And once again, it goes COOH in the structural formula, but in the actual drawn out structure for the molecule, these are actually all in displayed formula. We can see that we've got this C double bond O, and then we've got this OH section separately. All on the same carbon, but we're not following the exact pattern listed in the structural perhaps. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I really do hope you found it helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. For more videos on organic chemistry to support your revision and study of chemistry, click the links on screen now. And until next time, happy revising.